connection to Jerry body? No. I don't think she can hear still. <laughs> I'm good. I could hear you guys. Oh. You can hear me. Also. Yes. Okay, All right, we're being live streamed and I have 6.30, so I'm gonna start the webinar now. We should start to see uh, attendees join us. Okay, great. We'll just give everybody a second. Thanks. Hi, guys. Zach's here. Hey, Zach. Good, Good to see you. Doing? It Hi, sounds guys. like we're going to have a multitude of uh, Kristen <laughs> Burtis. So before we start, maybe before I call uh, roll, I'll teach them all how to change their names. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jimmy. Jimmy, good to see you. So while we are waiting to everybody named Kristen Burtis tonight, um, I'm going to teach you how to change your name, because I assume that's not most of your names. Down at the bottom of the screen, if you move the cursor, you will see uh, participants. Click on that. You will see uh, uh, a list of participants, several of them with the name Kristen Burtis. If you move the cursor over that and right click, you will get a menu. One of those menu options is rename. You could change your name to your own name or to some alias we won't know, but you could change your name. I could do it too, but I don't know who's who. I saw one of you do it. <laughs> we'll give everybody a second. Uh... I can't believe that worked. I only see one. Okay, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, why don't we, thank you, Jeremy, for doing that. And then why don't we get started with roll call? Does that sound good? Okay, uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome. I am going to, uh, I'm going to mute everybody right now. I am going to call the roll when, it, for uh, committee members, when I call your name, please unmute yourself, acknowledge your name, and then mute yourself again. If you are a board member, but not a committee member, I'm not going to call your name, but I am going to find your name in the participant list and write it down. So let's start with Katie Walsh. Present. Thank you. John DeLuper. Present. Thank you. Sandra Alfonso. Sandra Alfonso. Joan Body. Here. Thank you. Joseph Canale. Here. Thank you. Jerry Chan. Jerry Chan. David Estrada. David Estrada, Diana Gonzalez, Diana Gonzalez, Zachary Jacy. Here. Thank you. Roberto Martinez. Speaking, speaking, present. Thank you. Marilyn Melman. Myra Molina. Myra Molina. 
Gabino Morales. Here. Thank you. Samuel Sierra. Samuel Sierra. Cindy Bandenbosch. Cindy Bandenbosch. Katie Roll is called. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, I will uh, share my uh, screen just to be able to go through the agenda. Um, so thank you everybody for joining. Um, we do have a full house and so I appreciate that. Um, let me see if this works. And we will know in a second. Um, share my screen, share this presentation. And maybe I'll just make it a full screen quickly. Um, okay, so um, really happy to really happy to be here. Um, really happy to kind of start off with a, a lot of um, ex excitement um, around uh, working and problem solving on transportation um, issues in our district, um, but really trying to have a district that also reflects the kind of community that we want to live in. And so being not just reactive, but be proactive um, with transportation, safety, trucking, um, you name it, relates to climate change, re relates to environment, relates to public health, relates to public safety. So, um, you know, I think John and I can talk a little bit about uh, this as we keep meeting, but I'm really um, excited about stepping into this role as the chair of this committee. So I just want to thank the community board um, and the, the leadership opportunity to be able to kind of keep moving all of these issues. That being said, uh, just let's go through the agenda really quickly, and then I'm going to pass to John. Um, so we'll do some welcome and introductions. We we want to kick off actually just having the CB7 members. Um, if you can introduce yourself, um, let us know in the district where you live. And then if, you, if, if you're new to the Transportation Committee, if you served on it before. So, so again, just like where you are in the district and then um, if you've served on transportation before, um, we'll do public comment. Jeremy will help um, with the timer if we can do that. Um, so we've left time for public comment just at the start, three minutes each. Um, then we'll go to a presentation. We've got a couple of folks involved um, about uh, around first and second, third avenue, some, some work um, being presented that's a about to commence. Um, and then Fourth Avenue, work that has already started. I'm getting a presentation on that. Then we'll have some discussion and then public comment again. Um, so why don't I pass to John? And then we can kick, kick uh, go around the room and, and go to our other community board members and I'm happy to call on them. Sure. John? Uh, yeah. I'm John DeLuper. I'm the vice chair. Uh, live on 61st Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. Been on this committee for a couple of years now. And uh, I want following up on what Katie said, we're definitely very excited to uh, begin this year of meetings. Uh, at the executive committee last month, uh, Julio, the chair of the board, mentioned that transportation is going to be one of the big priorities and one of the big focuses for uh, the board this year. Uh, as you know, we have many big projects, uh, some of which will be talked about tonight, uh, but these include things on the BQE, Third Avenue. Um, there's even been meetings, uh, for instance, on the IBX, you know, the proposed uh, train that the MTA had a, a meeting on last week. So there's all kinds of issues like those and others that we're hoping to stay engaged on. And as part of that, we are uh, think we are considering where we are and thinking about our uh, initiative this year. So one that we're we're considering new ways of outreach. You know, so for instance, we're considering ways of going to visit some of the sites. So like, if you um, were interested in in naming an area that's a, a tricky one that maybe needs some study or discussion by committee, you can contact the board and uh, then we'll uh, explore more on that issue. And uh, another thing is we want to make sure that um, uh, that we're addressing the issues of this community. And so there is a, a, a way that, that we can all work together to get that started. Uh, for instance, you know, if you see something that's an issue, uh, and it's transit related, you know, you can call 311, get the service number and send it to CB7. That way we can have the data as we consider issues throughout the district to focus on this year. So that's a little bit about me and uh, a little bit about what we're going to be doing. So um, I'll turn it back 
to Katie, and then I yep. think we're going to be going to to other to everyone else and, and seeing what they're saying. Yep. So we'll just go to the board members. Um, I realized if you're not on transportation, just that's okay. You can just say that you're a board member. Um, and then Jeremy, there are some newcomers that I've, I'm realizing I don't know everyone's name. So um, where do you live in the district? And if if you're on transportation, just, just to say so. Um, Jimmy Lee? Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Jimmy Lee. Um, I'm not on the transportation committee. Yeah, um, I live in Sunset Park, uh, on the border of Sunset Park and Boyle Park. Yeah, uh, good to see you. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, Joan, body? Hi, everyone. I am a committee member, a board member for decades. And uh, one of the biggest, areas that we have to look at again is Bartell Pritchett Square. Um, driving along Prospect Park to go around that circle is very, very difficult. People continue to want to go into the right. And of course, they're in the left. And this is causing many accidents up that way. So. That's, that's one of the main priorities that uh, I feel we have to look up, uh, look at again up here in Lindsay Terrace. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you, Joan. And of course, for your many years of service. Um, Joe Canelli. Oh, hi. Yeah, uh, Joe Canelli. Um, I was a transportation committee member before I was actually a community board member. So I think it's eight or nine years now. Um, I live on 41st Street in Sunset Park between 4th and 5th, so. Thank you, Joe. Also, thank you for your service. Um, Julio Pena, I don't know if you're with us, but I see your name. Hi, uh, I'm here. Uh, I, uh, hi everyone, Julio Penny III, uh, board chair, uh, ex officio of the Transportation Committee. Um, excited to see so many faces here and folks engaged. Um, I just wanted to say, um, there's, I know there's a lot on the agenda. Um, you know, we talked a bit about, you know, a lot of some of the transportation uh, challenges this community is facing, but also a lot of the opportunities uh, that uh, the committee is going to be talking about. Um, and transportation is really going to be a key issue uh, that we're going to be focusing on at this board. Uh, so really looking forward to the conversation and how we can um, usher some of the things that we're, we're going to be uh, moving forward. So really looking forward to the conversation and how we can um, move things along. So thank you, Katie, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, and Julio. You live in Sunset Park. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Born yep. Sunset Park. Park. Uh, Great. 40th yep. Street. Yep. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to Zach JC. Hi, uh, Zach JC here. I am a 14 year member of the Transportation Committee, um, 14 year community board member on the hiatus from the community board this year. Uh, former chair of the, of the Transportation Committee. Uh, I'm glad that uh, <clears throat> the committee is going to remain busy. This committee has always been very busy and been a big focus of this uh, um, of this community board. And we've, I'm happy to continue the work that we've been doing and embark on new projects and continue with the old projects and continue with our good work. Thank you, Zach, of course. Um, okay, I'm gonna keep keep going. You can just, uh, as a board member, um, just let us know if you're on transportation and where you live in the district um, or your affiliation with the district. I can just put it that way. Um, I'm just gonna go through and see about three, four more names and then we'll keep going. Um, Beverly Klein, Kleinman. Hi, good evening. Um, I am not on the transportation committee, but I have, have been a board member uh, for almost 20 years now. I live in Windsor Terrace and I'm interested in everything that makes our neighborhood a better neighborhood. 
Thank you. And the Windsor Terrace representation. Um, Cynthia Felix. Hi, I live in Sunset Park. I am not on the transportation committee. I am the chair of public safety. Thank you, Cynthia, also for joining, given all the public safety overlap. Um, Pat Ruiz. Give Pat a second if she's unmuting. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Um, I am not on the transportation committee. I am the second vice chair of the community board. Uh, I live in Bay Ridge, but raised my daughter in Sunset Park for about 20 years of her life. I lived in Sunset Park since 1980. I moved out about eight years ago. I am also the president of the Boricua Festival Committee that um, supports um, Sunset Park as well as the borrowing program. And I am just looking forward to hearing all of the transportation needs and concerns in Sunset Park and see how I can be supported. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Gambino. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me here. Um, I'm a new member on transportation committee and I would just like to be interested in trying to help the committee in the work that they do um I live in Sunset Park and hopefully we could do good work together thank you thank you Gambino okay um Jeremy did I leave any other folks who are on the board now or in the transit I think I went through all or you can uh, unmute yourselves <laughs> put your hand up if you're on community board seven. I think you got it. I think I got it. Okay, great. Um, wonderful. Thank you. So uh, we, before we jump into the presentations, um, do we have any public comment um, for three minutes? If you want to put your hand up and, you know, try and be mindful of the time. Otherwise, Jeremy has a timer. Um, uh, Petra? Petra, you could unmute yourself right now. Yes, good evening. I'm really proud of the work you guys are doing. My name is Petra Pena. I'm a long, long resident of Sunset Park. I live on 56th Street. Um, my kids have all grown up now and moved away, but I'm very concerned about my neighbor's children and uh, wanted to, I know you guys are top priority is the safety of everyone, but with the new elementary school that opened on 60th Street, I'm very concerned that there's only one safety agent for the whole school and um i want to be advised as to how to proceed to help them out because the volume of kids that are crossing 60th street is very dangerous with the schools and all the traffic coming off the varisano so um, there's a lot of concern and the high speed traffic on 56th street off fourth avenue since 54th street is up it's not a no, no left turn um, street, the high volume of 56th Street has become very, very unbearable. So I wanted to share that with the committee. And I know you guys have a very packed agenda and a lot of priority, but the safety of our kids in Sunset Park is the priority. And I want you guys to be aware of that issue on 60th Street with that new school there. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Petra. Um, okay. Yeah, well, can can talk um, in a little bit about some of those points. Um, any other okay. public comment? I could put your your hand up. Um, give it a second. Okay. Um, not seeing any. Um, and so then, uh, what I will do is um, turn over to Kristen. Kristen Burtis. So we have our two presenters tonight is Kristen and Christy. So Kristen Burtis <laughs> from Burtis <laughs> Consulting. Um, and you're set up in terms of sharing your slides and everything, right? Yes. Okay, great. So over to you. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, let me, oh, wait. It says host disabled participant. Yes, you need permission. Yeah. So I'll give you permission right now. Thanks. You should be able to share yep. now. Okay. Okay. 
Can everybody see that okay? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Katie. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, appreciate you giving us the opportunity to present here tonight. As Katie uh, mentioned, I'm uh, from Burtis Consulting Group. Um, I'm the president of Burtis Consulting Group. I'm here with my colleagues from EDC and AECOM. So this is an EDC project. Uh, and AECOM is the contractor who will be doing the work in conjunction with Triumph. Um, so we're very excited to, to talk with you tonight about this actually getting off the ground. I know it's been a long time in the, uh, in the making and the creation, but we're very excited that it's, uh, the shovels are, are gonna be on the ground uh, very shortly. So um, I know that there was a presentation back in March to go over the, the project. So just a refresher to, to go uh, through this with you. The location of this is 36th Street to the north, uh, East River to the west and 45th Street to the south. Third Avenue to the east, and we'll get a little bit more um, an overview of that a little bit long. Uh, sorry, a little bit uh, into the presentation. So this project will consist of replacement of catch basins, removal of cobblestones, removal of uh, unused and inactive railroad tracks in the right of way, street restoration, landscaping, building protected bike lanes, reconstruction of sidewalks, and making the long overdue uh, infrastructure repairs. As I mentioned, uh, this basically right now, the, the current status of this project, the contractor is in the process of mobilizing the area. So that began this week on October 3rd. The duration of this project is 18 months. And as I mentioned, the contractor is AECOM in conjunction with Triumph Construction. And we are the community construction uh, liaisons for this project. So myself and my colleague who's on the call, Oscar Jonas, who's the boots on the ground, uh, will be your, your go-to people for, for this and basically be the, the go-between between, between the, the community and the construction. Um, so in addition, I'm just, um, in addition, the work is gonna be in five phases and we'll go a little bit deeper into the phases uh, later on in the presentation, but just as a quick overview, phase one of the construction is started on 39th Street between the East River and just to the west of the intersection of 2nd Avenue. And as part of this construction, uh, the catch basins are going to be installed, cobblestones and inactive roadway, rail, railways uh, that are in the right of way will be removed, the bike lanes will be installed and sidewalk, new sidewalk reconstruction will take place, and then that will be followed by the street restoration work. So again, this just gives you a quick overview of the actual location. And as I mentioned, the first phase is from the from 39th Street, from basically the East River to just uh, east of the, sorry, west of the Second Avenue. Just to refresh everybody's memory from the presentation at EDC, and I believe Meredith who's on the call, she gave the presentation back in March, but just wanted to give you a quick um, overview of the, of, of the project and a couple of the design details. So as I mentioned, it's located between 37th and 44th streets between the Gowanus Expressway and the waterfront. These locations were strategic and they were based on the current conditions and needs. The main goal of this project is to improve the drainage and upgrade the infrastructures and to make this very safe. Um, so there's a number of areas that have been implemented to, for, sa from safety, for safety concerns. Uh, there is extensive sidewalk and roadway work that is planned. Uh, between 39th Street and 41st Street is where the cobblestone pavers will be removed and the inactive uh, rail tracks will remain uh, but sorry, it, active existing rail tracks will remain, will, will remain, but the unused ones will be removed. Uh, sidewalks will be expanded at 38th and sorry, 39th and 3rd Avenue. Um, there's going to be a new bike lane along 39th Street from 2nd Avenue running west. And the streetscape and roadway improvements will also include new street plantings. There's going to be over almost 100 street, uh, new street uh, trees and 13 transplanted trees will be part of this project. And there'll be expanded sidewalks at 39th Street and 3rd Avenue, including plantings as well as redesigned corner of 39th and 2nd Avenue. So again, this is just to give you a quick uh, overview of 
the sidewalk and roadway um, that's gonna be redone. So as I mentioned, the railroad tracks will remain that are in uh, blue, solid blue, the railroad tracks will be removed that are in the hashtag blue, cobblestone pavings will be removed um, and sidewalk expansions in the red. There's gonna be some bus stop relocations and a new bike lane. Uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, as I said, there's going to be a lot of new trees that are going to be planted in this area. So almost 100 new trees. You'll see from this diagram, the new trees are in the green and there's 97 of them. There's 13 transplanted trees that are in the reddish color and the existing trees that are in the yellow will stay. And there will be um, continuous tree pits uh, in certain areas. This is just a general overview of the before and then after of the typical streetscape that the improvements in terms of the trees and sidewalks. Again, this is the before picture and this is the after where there'll be a bike lane, there'll be um, the extended sidewalk and tree, plant, tree plantings. Um, Again, this is what it currently looks like. And this is a rendering of the new protected bike lane on across 39th Street from 2nd Avenue to 1st Avenues. This is the existing 3rd Avenue and 39th Street. And then this is the new 39th and 3rd Avenue where, where there's gonna be expanded areas to accommodate the high pedestrian traffic, the curb extensions, additional lighting, trees and benches. And this just gives you a snapshot of what an overlay of what's currently there to what will be there. Um, and again, these are all safety measures that were taken uh, into consideration to make this, knowing that it's a high traffic location. So taking out that turn and having a single, um, single sidewalk there with continuous tree pits, um, benches, and other accommodations to taking safety into, into uh, consideration. So as I mentioned, there's now we're getting to the fun stuff, the phasing plan for, for the actual construction work. And as I mentioned, we're very excited that this is starting and has started. So just to give you a sense of what's going on right now, um, as you may have seen over the last couple of months since May, National Grid was out there. So that's one reason why this project, when we came to you in March, um, was slated to begin in May, but we had to wait until National Grid completed the work that they needed to do in order for that infrastructure to take place. So then we could come in and do the other uh, work that needs to, to happen. So we're, as I mentioned, we're very excited to get this off the ground. And uh, so currently over the course of this week and next week, the contractor is working on their maintenance and protection of traffic plan, the MPT plan. So you'll see that there's gonna be barrels and no parking signs uh, that will be placed along 39th Street. And that's in preparation of the construction taking place um, the week of the 17th. So, um, and National Grid is still out there. So you will see National Grid out there on 39th and 3rd Avenue, they still need to finish some of their work, but the areas that we need to go into to start, they have completed their work. So as you'll see from here, phase one is, uh, is slated to, obviously, as I mentioned, started this week and will commence in February of 2023. And as I mentioned that it uh, entails the catch basins. And so you, so that's this, this piece of the work. Um, and then phase two is from October 31st to next February. Then phase three is November 16th to, um, to, to January 8th. And then phase four is December 19th to May, 2023. And then phase five is 
next year is March 20, uh, March 23rd, uh, sorry, March 22nd uh, to March uh, 4th, 4th and 2024. Um, so you'll see the different phases of, of this project. Um, so as part of this, as I mentioned, these are the, the construction is going to slated to take place for 18 months. And as part of that, uh, the impacts, there will be impacts to the sidewalks, partial roadway closures, and temporary relocations of the bus stops and the city bike racks. So right now, the city bikes that were on 39th Street are have been relocated to behind Costco. And once, uh, as we progress with the construction, the bus stops will be relocated and we'll notify the community of those uh, adjustments. And in conjunction with the MTA uh, making their, their notifications. Their, the staging area is not close to this proximity. It's about 15 minutes away. However, there will be storage of material on the roadway that is needed to accomplish the construction on a daily basis. Um, so this is a newsletter that we have put together for uh, the outreach to the community. And this is gonna be a monthly newsletter that is, that is put out. And we're working together with the community board, we're working together with Industry City and the Sunset Park group to disseminate the, uh, this, this notification. And based on some feedback from the community board, it will be disseminated in different languages to accommodate the, the languages in the neighborhood. And as I mentioned, this will be sent out approximately the first of, of every month and giving everybody updates on the, on the schedule. Um, so currently, right now, we've we've worked with, as I mentioned, Industry City, the SBIDC, uh, the Community Board, and we've done door-to-door -door notifications where we've uh, given the newsletters to 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 residents and to uh, businesses. There's been email notifications sent out, as I mentioned, the monthly newsletter, and all future correspondences will be in English, Spanish, and Chinese. Um, Myself and Oscar are the liaisons and Oscar's kind of the boots on the ground. There's a dedicated phone number if there's any issues as uh, things arise and as construction progresses. And there's a dedicated email that you can uh, send to us as well and we will get back to you in short order. Um, and again, just the ongoing community and business outreach to, to everybody. So that's, uh, I just want to thank you again for your time and uh, we'll open it up to uh, questions. Yeah, um, so I, I will uh, turn to Zach in a second, whose hand shot up right away because Zach um, was transportation uh, chair before this and kind of saw this through, but I, I just wanted to uh, add to the uh, Kristen's presentation to say that um, so at least John and I had our first meeting um, with Burtis Consulting about this work and and EDC on uh, Tuesday of this week. So just talking a little bit more about giving some of this feedback, but this is we're still in the moment of feedback for this community outreach process. So please, like, if you have ideas and suggestions right now, um, raise your hand and let it be known. Um, there were a couple of things that John and I um, talked about in that call that I would love to, um, I don't yet see reflected in the presentation. And so I would like to just have it um, uh, and ref reflected back. Um, we had raised that one of the things that we requested in the March meeting um, was bollards. So I'd love for you to talk about that. That was something that the community board asked for in the design. Um, a second element of the design was specifically related to the um, bus access right on 39th street um, where you have some sidewalk and some bike lanes and, and we, we can't see that through the design um, and so that uh, accessibility issue so bollards for safety accessibility um, those two issues were raised to edc in march and we, we brought them up again on tuesday so I just would like you to be able to respond to those questions um, and then specifically around um, the fact that the Equinor project is going up and so you have the bike lane um, and understanding the impacts to Equinor wind uh, offshore project, as well as the BQE rerouting. Um, so the BQE rerouting, we're going to have a presentation from DOT 
uh, on October 24th at our next meeting, um, but the phasing of that overlaps with this phasing. Um, so uh, would love to just give you a chance to respond to those. And we'd already previewed that um, on Tuesday. Um, if you can go through them and then we'll open it up to some questions. Good evening, everyone. My name is Meredith Simon Pearson. I'm a project director here at EDC on our um, capital team. Um, Kristen, if you could just bring the presentation back up, I think it'd be helpful if we can have some images to look at as we speak to them. So um, I'll start with bollards. So we, we heard the community board's desire for bollards at the corner of 39th and 3rd during our March presentation. Uh, and we took that request to DOT and their response as the approving agency um, was that the project's current planned intersection uh, rationalizes the intersection and improves safety as, as designed. Um, and that after implementation, the project can be further reviewed by DOT and see if further changes like bollards are warranted. I'll just let you go one by by one, Meredith. Sure. You just want to go through it. Yeah. Thanks. Um, on the Equinor wind turbine project, uh, this project is still two years out. Um, and as the Brooklyn, as the South Brooklyn Marine Terminal is an EDC asset, we will keep the community updated on any future construction impacts to the bike lanes in this area. Um, one second. So um, I believe the the bus stop that you're um, asking about is at the corner of 39th and 3rd, or is it the uh, one first. at 39th and it's the one at 39th and 1st? First. first. Th uh, 39th, just, I, th I believe it's just off the corner of 2nd. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Second. <laughs> so Thank that, you. Yeah. Second. I was like, I don't that, think we're, out. <laughs> we're not over there. Yeah. Um, it, it's hard to tell from the not to, it's hard to tell from the the rendering i'll just pull up the rendering uh i think it's this way give me one second so here but there is uh the bus stop is uh access accessible directly from the adjacent sidewalk uh which is 15 feet wide so there is accessibility to that bus stop it could just be your design presentation, but do yes. you have to cross? Yeah. Do you have to cross the bike lane to access the bus stop? I don't think this is the location of the bus stop. Um, I think if you flip forward or backwards, maybe. I think this is this is the, the bus stop? This is it. Yeah. Yes. Um, so the sidewalk at this location, I believe, is eight feet wide. I'm looking. It just it looks very narrow. This is what we raised in March. Um, so I think we're still looking for some clarity around that. Um, are you able to come come back to us? I just again, it's it looks like it's creating a conflict, and we raised this in March. I understand. So we're trying to avoid conflict. Yeah. Um. So Kristen, if you could flip forward in the appendix, we have a plan of this area. Here. Um, so this is this corner at 39th and 2nd Avenue. Um, and so in pink is the bike path, essentially. And so this is a shared pedestrian and bike way. Um, the the bike circulation at the top is along Second Avenue, and then it comes through this corner and then goes off the page to the left, and that's where the beginning of this separated bike path begins. Um, and you can see the bus stop is located here. Um, this has been reviewed by DOT for safety and determined to be uh, a safe width. And I believe that the sidewalk in this location is 15 feet wide, but I will double check on that. Okay, and then, um, and then, Sack, sorry, I'll go to you as just from BQE. We'd raise that as well to cover the presentation. Yes, so uh, the BQE redirection will only happen on weekends, and our project will be active um, on weekdays. So we don't believe that there will be a conflict 
with with that work. Um, and again, DOT's Office of Construction Mitigation and Coordination, OCMC, is responsible for reviewing and issuing permits in the streets. And so they're the ones coordinating all of the work in the streets and, and issuing permits. Okay, may, may follow up on a couple of things, but just go to board members for questions. Zach, you have your hand up and anyone else just from the board, if you wanna put your hand up, go for it, Zach. Um, thanks, Katie. Uh, a couple of my questions too. I'm uh, sorry to hear that the DOT is going to take its normal route of <clears throat> assessing the danger after the danger's there to see how they're going to deal with it in their uh, in their slow moving in their slow moving way. Um, but I <clears throat> do. You did mention there's going to be some safety precautions along Third Avenue and 39th Street. Uh, I used some new language when you're talking about the track that was going to be removed. Uh, did you say as of right or right of way? The track's going to be removed. Uh, what, that, that's a new distinction you guys are you guys are using as to which railroad track is going to be used. I want to make sure that our understanding going through this entire process is that all the track in the roadbed is going to be taken away that's not used. Uh, I want to confirm that. Uh, also. Um, we also requested that the work at the track removal, the work at the bottom, 39th Street and 2nd Avenue, um, which is phase five, be done early in the process. Now we're going to have to wait another three years for this phase to be done. This would be a real question that this was the phase that would be done first. So I just want to know what the reasoning is for this scheduling of these phases. Thank you. Um, I can speak to the phasing. So uh, the phasing of our project, Kristen, I think it'd be helpful if you just keep the presentation up and we can flip through so we have something to look at as we go. Um, as mentioned by Kristen in her presentation, our project was delayed from May until March because of work that National Grid had to do ahead of our project work. Um, and so unfortunately, parts of our phasing are determined by National Grid's phasing. And so their, their area, their last and longest area is in that area on 39th and 3rd. And so that's, that is what pushed that phasing towards the end. But more specifically, what about third? 39th and 2nd, the, the area where you exit the BQE, which is the biggest, one of the hardest things for Census Park residents to take over and over. It's exiting the BQE and having to cross those, those railroad tracks. And we had requested that you do that work first when you start this project, because that would be a great bone to throw the community and so that you're, the improvements that you're gonna make are gonna be felt by everybody, but that was so. I so I believe that, that the, the tracks at 39th and 2nd are active rail tracks, so those won't be removed. Um, they, are but you can... they are not. That is not. That's not the case. Those, those tracks, when you make the turn off of 39th and 2nd off the BQE, those are not active rail tracks. Those are 1st Avenue, the ones you're thinking of that are active. Understood. I was, I was confused about where we were located. Um, again, at at 2nd and 39th, it's, our phasing is based on National Grid's phasing of work. And so we can't enter that area until National Grid has finished their work in that area. Okay, but that falls into the next question. What did we use the new terminology tonight about as of right track that's gonna be removed? What, can you tell us exactly what that means? Because it's something we haven't heard you guys say before. Um, I, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll be removing inactive rails as identified in an earlier slide. Kristen, if you want to flip back up yeah. to that slide. What was, what was the terminology you used in the it's, presentation? Was it as of right or? or was it right of way? Right of way. Yeah. This because, is a, okay. New terminology. So any unused, any unused uh, railroad tracks, those are the ones that are being removed. Sorry. Uh, railroads, yes. Yeah. All inactive railroad tracks. Okay. 
So this as Sorry. The, as has been understood this entire time, this, all these years. That's still the same. But I just was concerned about new uh, vocabulary. So it's a bit hard to see in this diagram, but the solid blue lines blue lines are the active rail tracks, and the dashed blue lines are the inactive rails to be removed. Um, and your uh just between Zach and, and Jeremy, um, when when this presentation came in March, we had flagged that phasing request as well with the work being done. Jeremy, is that something, and Zach, you you, you had already previously brought up? I don't recall uh, that. Yes, it is. Um, <clears throat> okay, so it's been, yeah, something so it's been something for a couple of years, right? Yeah. Yeah, we brought it up in March again, but I, there's, there's extra, you know, extemporaneous, there's other circumstances that dictate the timing. I just was curious as to what that was. So it's happy to get all this work done. Just okay. was curious. Okay. But thank you. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm all, next person can take over. Okay, great. Okay, John. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you. Um, following up on Zach's questions, I had a few things that I also wanted to double check on uh, from this presentation. So first, on slide six, which you have in front of you right now, there are a bunch of dots. Are those the trees or are they something else? What Can you tell us what's going on with those? Um, I believe those are a leftover layer in our diagram and, and there are some existing trees and some existing light posts, uh, but they're not indicative yeah. of what's happening in our design. Okay, and then speaking of the light posts, you mentioned additional lighting and new street lights. Do you have a map of where those are gonna be deployed? Are they new, are they new street lights? And if so, where are they going to be deployed? I believe there's new lighting at the corners of 39th and 3rd and 39th and 2nd, but um, Kristen, if you could pull up those plans, I think it will show them. Okay, so was it was it that thing back on that previous one that was like an interesting looking lamppost? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so just a one new light or, or is there going to be a bunch of them? Um, I, I don't have a quantity offhand, but we can circle back to that. Okay. Yeah. I asked that because I know that the board has asked many city agencies for a long time. Jeremy can speak more on this for additional lighting throughout the district. So uh, if, we, if we can find that out, that's, that's a great thing. And the last thing I wanted to ask was on slide 23 with the bus stop. Um, in terms of accessibility, maybe I'm reading this wrong, but was it looking like you are putting a bus boarding platform or a floating bus stop there, or is that just like where it says bus stop? It, that's, I think, just visually to indicate where the bus stop will be located. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, because those those kinds of things, you know, are, are really something that, that can help with accessibility. So, I mean, I'm, not for this project, but for future projects in our area, having that kind of thing is great because then people can't block the bus stop and it makes it easier. The bus pulls right to the side. So, sorry, it's not for this time, but uh, thank you for uh, elaborating on that. All right. And that, hey, those any other? Questions. Thank you. And um, right, if there's any other board members with questions, um, feel free to put your hand up. Um, not. Um, Zach Unless, has his hand up again. Oh, he does. Okay. Or maybe it's a mistake. Um, I think it might be a mistake. It might be from before. Um, okay, so. Uh, a couple of the things that we um, we we heard you guys talk about is also around language access um, and getting the word out and talking with us a little bit more about construction. Um, once this is actually happening, people people will will see it happening. Um, and so, just to reiterate that, as John said at the top of the meeting, calling three one one. Next step, if, if you see an issue, tr you know, question around the construction that's actually happening, um, I'm just going to go through the steps. Call 311, file something, send it to Community Board 7. Um, Kristen, you had also provided your contact information. Um, so how do you want to handle if things are happening during construction that the community sees or hears or desires? Um, do you want them to, th they should also contact you directly? 
and you because we just need to be they able can. to have a log. Yeah, we want to be responsive um, and proactive. So I think if you want to have them uh, send an email or or make a phone call, depending on the level of urgency, um, you know, either is fine. But we want to be we want to be proactive in dealing with the issues uh, in a timely fashion. Okay. Um, and who will be responsible? Is it ACOM in terms of signage um, and safety of um, anything that is existing that's there in terms of pervert, you know, accessibility? Who, who's the entity responsible for that? So that will be, okay. Yeah, that'll be me. Um, so Katie, this is Karan Shah from ACOM. Um, so we are part of the CM team, our resident engineer, inspector, and construction manager. They'll be on site and we'll be coordinating that with our contractor, um, Triumph, would have their crews on site, making sure that safety is in place. Okay. Um, and just, just to re reiterate, you know, preserving, um, if there is any existing bike lanes, those have to be preserved by New York City law during construction. Um, the same with pedestrian access, um, just ensuring people's safety. Um, and if there are no standing zones, um, that is not uh, it is not legal for uh, construction staff to throw a vest in the front of their car and just pull their car in front if there's a no standing zone. So um, this has been happening on Fourth Avenue. It's been raised. It's been flagged. It's putting pedestrians and cyclists and children and folks at risk. Um, and so we just uh, ahead of construction starting on third, um, just would like to get that guarantee that um, from AECOM. Uh, that it won't be happening with the uh, Third Avenue and First Avenue and Second Avenue work. Yep, understood. We'll we'll make sure of that. Okay. okay. Um, great. Uh, as everyone knows from personal experience, um, the streets are dangerous enough on third and you add construction um, and this adds a, a level of um, hazard that is quite significant going into also with weather events um, happening and understanding that this is also going to be happening during periods of, you know, more rain, um, snow, you know, the winter is coming. So um, we will follow up. So, okay. Um, I don't see any other questions that have come up. Um, and so we'll welcome you uh, guys to stay because, um, so thank you, Kristen. Um, and thank you, Meredith and Karan and everyone from, from the team. Um, we're gonna talk about 4th Avenue, which where the construction has already started. Um, and I will turn to Christy, um, who is also on, I'm just looking for Christy. Um, and I, I think you also have a slide deck. So over to you, thank you. Thank, thank you. I appreciate everything and giving the opportunity to talk with you guys. Thanks. Oh, Chris, uh, Christy, or we've got a couple of folks on. I think um, Katie, if you can give um, Judith uh, share yes. screen privileges, that would be great. Okay, so um, Jeremy, Judith would need privileges. Judith, you have screen. those privileges. You could share your screen. Great, thank, thank you. you. And so, Christy, if you want to introduce yourself yes, and your course. team. Okay, great, great. I'd like Thanks. to give a shout out to EDC, and I look forward to working closely with Kristen and the team there uh, just to share contact information so that our work doesn't conflict. <laughs> so I'm glad to hear about this. Thank you to the board, Transportation Committee, and everyone for having us. It's always nice to see you guys. And we apologize that we were not able to present sooner. Uh, we didn't have much to provide when we were invited back in May. And then, of course, the summer hiatus. Still no excuse, but we're here now and we're happy to present and collaborate with you guys. So thank you for ha having us. Christy Germain, Assistant Director of Intergovernmental Community Affairs. I'm accompanied by our Community Construction Liaison, Judith Ogo. Uh, Judith, are you able to share the presentation? Yes. Um, do you see my screen? I see you. <laughs> Not yet. We also have our resident engineer on the project, Sound J Modi. We have a DDC's engineer in charge, Lafayette Cisco, behind the scenes to assist with any uh, technical questions that you guys may have. So that's the team on the fourth Avenue <laughs> project. And just a little background this is a Vision Zero Great Streets project. Uh, so we are happy to be here. And um, if you can load that up, Judith. Yeah. It's 
Okay. Can you can you see that? Nope, not yet. Sorry. Give me a second, guys, please. I'll also try on my end, Judith. Yeah, I'm just, I don't know why. It's. You both have permission. Yeah, but I don't know why it's acting up this way. I'm getting that host disabled participant screen sharing uh, oh. error message, Jeremy. I'm sorry, Christy. <laughs> I gave it to Kristen. Uh, <laughs> tongue twisters tonight <laughs> yeah you, you now have permission okay um give me a second i don't know why it's acting oh my god my screen is acting up let me see okay um share Can you see now? Yes, we can. Yes. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So my name is Judith. As Chrissy said, Judith will go. I'm the community liaison for Fourth Avenue Project. Um, I'm going to go straight to the project, about the project. Um, it's Fourth Avenue Safety Improvement Phase A. The project ID is HWK1669A. We are in the borough of Brooklyn. The registration number is 20211424976. MNJ Engineering is the resident engineer supervising the project. Um, JR Cruz is the contractor. The notice to proceed date was winter of 2021. Um, contract completion date is sub summer of 2024. The total um, construction budget is 43,750 um, million. Um, how would this project benefit you? The project will completely redesign Fort Avenue from 8th Street to 64th Street to ensure safety of all pedestrians and also motorists. We are going to raise the median as well as the uh, MTA events along 4th Avenue from, 4th, from 64th to 8th Street. There will also be pedestrian refuge island. This is the overview of the project area. Um, construction overview. When we start the project, there's initial outreach where we go around the community um, informing them of what we are about to do, how it's going to affect them, the impact of the work. Um, we reach out to the community out, um, the community boards, elected officials. We inform them of the project when we're going to start. Um, whilst we're doing that, there's also the permitting aspect and scheduling in the field office. And once all has been done, then we are on the road. We come to the actual construction site where we have to do demo, um, demolition of the existing median. And then once that is done, then the actual work would start. So we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna reconstruct the median actually from 64 to I think um, 43, um, it's already done. So we are only, um, we are going to just work along, but from 42nd all the way to 64th, literally there's no median, like it's, there's no medium. So we're gonna to have to reconstruct everything from 42nd all the way to 8th Street. And then there'll also be um, new traffic signals will be installed, new pavement markings along Fort Avenue, um, street intersection, well, there will be planting at um, a total of about 52, which includes plants and shrubs will be re um, re planted within the median. Um, how are we gonna be doing the work? We're gonna be working with three blocks at a time. So within those three blocks, um, work 
hours are from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., but currently we've been working from 7 to 3.30. There are Saturday works also involved, but that is when, as and when it's necessary. The contractor is also following all the OCMC allowable hours to work. What are we supposed, what are we gonna see within those three blocks? There'll be no standing any time. And that is one challenge that we are having right now. Um, we have no standing any time, but then we see cars will come in and park. Um, cars will be there to park. And when that happens, it also affects um, the cyclists because we are sharing a lane within um, the work zone. I have few times uh, gone to the precinct, informed them they came there a few times to um, give out tickets or to say to enforce it. I think I did call Jeremy the day I was even going to the precinct. I informed you about what was going on. So that is a challenge that we are having right now with the resident parking within the construction area. There's gonna be a shared lane within the construction area, there are visible signage. On every block, we have three no standing. So on every block, three northbound, three southbound, no standing within the construction area. Why are we going to share a, a, the bike lane? As per DOT permit, the contractor is to maintain a two lane traffic within the work zone, a 13 feet shared lane and a 20 feet travel lane. So combine 30, 23. 10 foot travel lane, Judith. Sorry, 10 foot travel lane and a 13 feet shared lane. So that becomes a combined of 23. What to expect within those three blocks that we are working. Before we start, I normally go around, there's a 72 hour notification that would inform the community about the impact and most often it's no parking. So they have a 72 hour notification. I have um, a blast that I send to all those that are on my e e network um, email notification. And then I also go out there and then I distribute door to door. And just to piggyback, Judith, the 72 hours does not include weekends and holidays. No, it doesn't. So once that has been, um, once the community has been formed, 72 hour prior and the 24 hour, the contractor comes and then start, um, would also put a uh, no parking signs, have a staging area where it says no park, no stand at any time then we'll begin to stripe where we'd have to cover the bike lane because we are sharing it. We have to cover it and put a sign that says the shared lane. And then we'll place concrete barriers within the work area. And then once that is done, we start to saw cut and we demobilize, um, we, de we demolish the existing media. And once that is done, we now start to excavate and then we we installed, we set up the precast planter walls. We pour concrete, so there'll be concrete work. There'll be backfilling work. Then there'll be restoration, pavement, asphalt. And once all this done, then the barriers will be removed and the road will be restored to the traffic pattern, the way it was. Um, during the winter season, how are we going to work? The contractor will be required to remove the snow within the work zone. So the traffic pattern during construction, the contractor will maintain crossing guards. There will be signage, safe work site for pedestrian and cyclists, as well as motorists. He would maintain a five feet access on sidewalk and cross road, crosswalks. Bike lane within the work zone will be temporary shared. Also, this is a moving way, a look away. So as we go along, the shed would move along with us. As the contractor moves, the shed will move along. So this is a typical um, MPT 
when we have cleared the road and we have put on the shared lane sign, this is how it looks like on a typical working day. This is when we are doing the excavation in the median. This is the precast planter walls when concrete is being poured. And then this is when we're reconstructing the planter wall. And this is how it looks like when it's done. We would have the restoration work done. And then also the median rest area, the pedestrian walkway would be restored. And once that is done, we have our final restoration work. And I, like I said, I'm the community liaison for the project. My email address is thought of safety, face a ccl at gmail.com. Our field office is 311 37th Street between 3rd and 4th. My phone number is 347 689 3550. And these are DDC's uh, website. If you want further information about DDC, you can go to any of this website videos and watch the way that DDC does. Or within the, web, the time of the project, um, this has already been sent out. I did give out the, the project info, but as and when the project is ongoing, if there are any changes, I would do that and email everybody as well as go on the field and give it to individuals. There are weekly advisories that I send out. Most of the time it's in all the languages within the area, which is Spanish, Korean, or Chinese and English. So this is a sample of what I sent out. This is a newsletter that just sent, I just sent out, which is the fourth quarter newsletter that would detail what has been done and what we intend to do in the few months. And on a weekly basis, I send out a weekly construction bulletin that will tell you what we are doing and uh, if there are any holidays that also will be taken care of within the weekly bulletin as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you um, Judith. Thank I don't you. know, Christy, if you wanted to add anything else before we jump in. Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay, Kate. great. Thank Judith, you. can you go back up um, to the planters um, median? Just wanted to clarify, you have mentioned earlier on that uh, at the locations where the medians are already um, four feet tall, um, that we go out, we will be installing the addition. So I think it's on 17. Try, try slide 17. The medians that are already raised, um, we go in and we'll be uh, constructing these planters. And this is where the, the shrubs and the, the greenery will be uh, inserted. So just to clarify on that. And then if you can go back to uh, 14, this is what an ideal uh, roadway looks like, a MPT setup. Unfortunately, it's been quite of a challenge on this project where we have vehicles, double parking, uh, uh, delivery trucks, uh, double parking. Um, again, it's a huge enforcement issue. We require all the support we can get. So if the board transportation committee can assist us with the local precinct, that would be very helpful um, if we can you know, maintain this MPT area the way it should be so that cyclists, pedestrians, and motorists are safe, of course. And I'll turn it over to you, Katie. Thank you. Um, and thanks again. I know yesterday schools were closed and you took the call on your on your holiday and time with family. Um, same for Judith. Thank you for making time to talk to um, Jeremy and um, John and I yesterday. There were a couple of things that we raised and I really um, like appreciate seeing in here this level of detail that you're giving to the community about what's expected in the construction. You can really like see it in the presentation um, going through it. Um, there were a couple of things that we had raised that you, um, just in terms of addressing, uh, that I, I thought was very helpful information, um, just to, to offer up, which is, um, if you want to just talk about the pause on 60, 
4th Street and that area, um, if you could just talk through that. Um, Jeremy had also talked about the request for or understanding that there's meant to be raised sidewalks um, and where that fits into to this project and what that means for 4th Avenue. Um, that question was directed to DOT um, when, with Emily on the call, but if, if you wanted to, if you're able to talk to that at all. Um, and then also just for this process that you're talking about um, with uh, cars and vehicles and things, um, again, we'll just say the same thing, which is that calling 311, sending that to CB7, and then also we have Judith's contact information. Um, this has been a habitual uh, issue, you know, it, it's in general with enforcement, with traffic and 311 calls, like not having those um, in a timely matter address, like this is something that happens, but now it's exacerbated because of construction um, in these no standing zones. So this is an issue that this community has dealt with before and we're not alone in New York City. Um, it, it's it's an issue, um, but I, I did just want to say that um, something that that I wasn't aware of, too, was that um, some of those parked cars, you know, with folks who are putting construction vests in their front um, with no standing are not part of, you guys were saying it's not part of your project, that it's other agencies, but just in general, if there's no standing signs, like do this, do the same process of the 311 calls um, and notifying CB7. Um, there was a, a accident um, on 50th Street and 4th Avenue a, a three days ago. I, I don't know the specifics, um, but it was an injury causing accident that sent the driver to the hospital. It was on 4th and 50th um, with another vehicle. Um, and so again, it was one of the rainy evenings. And I think just understanding that there's a lot happening on 4th now. And so it's really important that we're thinking about um, safety and ways people are moving through the neighborhood while you're making these changes. Um, so that was a mouthful. So 64th Street, if you want to talk about that, and then the raised sidewalks, and then we'll open it up to questions. Um, Christy, do you want me to go ahead? Okay. Um, on 64th Street. Um... Sorry, I was trying to mute myself, Judith. <laughs> so just to piggyback, thanks, Judith. Um, what Katie says is a ton of construction, um, as you guys may be aware. At the 64th and 4th Avenue intersection, we have uh, a building, uh, uh, low income housing going up on the corner, on the south side, on the north side, we have the MTA doing some construction. And then of course you have us in the center um, along the medians. Uh, that uh, current location is, being, is in the redesign phases. As I had mentioned yesterday, um, Sometimes plans are very old um, and they're not always accurate. Unfortunately, when we did, we, we dug, they came across a gas main, which has to be relocated before we can continue work. Thankfully, there was no accident. This could have caused an explosion and loss of power for probably half of the borough. Um, so we were very grateful to our crews and contractors that you know this was avoided. So that current section um, is being redesigned as we speak. Uh, so we've moved on to the next three block segment, which is almost complete. And if um, Judith, if you can go down the slides to show, um, I believe it's 55th and 58th. So that section is almost um, complete. According to our DOT permits, we're only allowed to work a three block segment as Judith mentioned. Uh, once we mobilize, we complete the work, uh, we'll demobilize, we'll repaint the bike lanes, and then we move on to the next three block segment. Uh, so I just wanted to um, address that. Um, I'm sorry, Katie, what was the, the next item aside from all the construction on the 64th street area? Sorry, this might be something for Jeremy to talk about, but the raised sidewalks. Um, Jeremy, I didn't understand what you what raised sidewalks meant. Oh, I, I, right. Sorry, terminology thing. Um, you talked about Fourth Avenue being ripped up again because of the medians and having raised cr cross crosswalks. Sorry, not sidewalks. No, no, not raised crosswalks either. I was talking about uh, this being. Uh, the third time, and then there's going to be a fourth time where we're going to go down 
uh, Fourth Avenue for major construction. Uh, the uh, lane that blocks the, uh, uh, or that protects the, uh, uh, or the area that protects the bike lanes uh, at the corners, uh, which is a pedestrian waiting area, which is supposed to get cement as well on, I think most, if not all of the corners uh, to narrow the crossing time for pedestrians crossing, but also provide uh, daylighting when it comes to uh, the bike lane uh, at turning locations. Um, that's going to have to get uh, uh, done in the future. I believe the near future, We've already had the bike lanes themselves in 2018, and then we had uh, the 59th Street uh, uh, rail, and we had a uh, uh, station, and we had uh, the MTA come down uh, 4th Avenue to 40th Street doing their portion of the media. So it's one project after another after another. And I'm, I was just wondering about the coordination of all these projects, why we couldn't get it uh, at least a couple of them like this and the other cement work done at the same time. So that uh, that's not part of this project. Um, but yeah, yeah, but that, that's on a different capital um, process than this. This was done um, years bef before. So where it's finally an implementation now or installation now. So the what you're talking about, Jeremy, the build out of the painted um, pedestrian areas along 4th Avenue that will be on a, a separate contract. And that's just part of the capital process. Emily, do you want to just introduce yourself? We know you, but. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, Emily Rikama, Brooklyn DOT. What's the time frame on that? Um, I can't, I don't know tonight. Um, but I can send you an email with that information sometime okay. soon. Okay, we'll bring it um, back mm -hmm. to the board in October. Thank you. Um, yep. Any questions for Christy or Judith? Um, if you want to put your hand up, if you're a board member, John, and then anyone else wants to raise their hand. And, th and then after this, we'll go to um, public, public questions, public comment. Um, so my question was on slide 19 with the image of the pedestrian area. I wanted to um, I wanted to check are all the pedestrian areas getting that wider treatment because my recollection is the last time uh, that this was presented in I think 2017 they were going to be smaller but I'm really glad to see they're wider because I know in other parts of the city the wider ones have been deployed so do you know if they're all going to have that um, it looks like a double length uh, for pedestrian crossing or is it going to be or are they going to vary depending on the intersection? Um, yes, it's, it is. It's all, you're going to be like this. All right, cool. Glad to hear. My recollection was when there were turning lanes, they're going to disappear. Are, are the turning that. lanes remaining a part of this? We can confirm that um, and get back to you, Jeremy. And, and, uh, Based on my... Based on my observations today, they're not there. Um, I, I saw turning lanes that were done, and I don't see. I didn't see them. Yes, yeah, so I can get back to you guys with that information and the locations as well. Yeah. So just 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 like what you all have that's built. Um, I think it's on fifty. What would it be? Fifty eighth Street would be the left turn because that's done looks like today um john they're not there anymore so it's just like big expanse and it's basically like a turn it's a turn lane um and it's just the um there's no medium the there's no, no medium at all it could just be paint yeah so it um it felt yeah it i just you know i saw it was a Fam young family crossing the street um they looked a bit exposed in in terms of like what that looks like yeah so, um, Jeremy, there are no turning, um, at the turning names, there are no crossings. At the turning names, there are no crossings. That I can confirm. Uh, there, no, there are crossings. There are crossings. 
60th and 4th would be a turning lane, a, a, a turning lane and a crossing. And 58th is a, is a turning lane right. too, and that's already built. I, I thought I should have taken a picture today and I forgot. <laughs> So folks are very exposed. Um, I'm curious if you have thoughts about that. Yeah, we'll confirm and get back to you. Um, <laughs> but I noticed um, if there isn't one, that that's a no uh, a no crossing um, intersection. Yeah. So we'll, we'll confirm that. OK, I'm just like, I was out there a couple hours ago, and there it was newly repainted crosswalks. So I just want to kind of put that out there. Um, that it's already built that, that that's what you guys have up sure and katie you said 58th yes it was 58th looked like it was new paint was done you had multiple people crossing making that like the your turn lane is built median's not there and it's just a crosswalk that people are walking on okay we'll check that out tomorrow okay thank you what would be a potential solution to thinking about that with this design Have construction on on the line. I thought I saw someone. Did you see construction? You don't have the answer. To is, is is Sanjay on the line? I think it was Lafayette. Yep. What 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 was that question again? Um, the, the question is that you have turn lanes right. and the crosswalks, but there's no median. Um, and so from a safety standpoint, it looks like it's leaving pedestrians and people very exposed. Oh, I like they're just on the street because it's level. The crosswalks are just level. And then you have the turn lanes. I think mm -hmm. in those locations, we got the crosswalk that is, we marked the crosswalk all as per DOT or design. So this will just mark up the crosswalk on like on a typical street where the pedestrian can cross when the lights in the field. Crossing strips. Right. So John, does that um I don't know that it's like reassuring to hear, but does that answer your question? That answers my question. It does worry me a little bit because I, I've seen everywhere you've deployed this new style um that you have on slide 19 seems to be really good because it slows down turning drivers. And I mean, I don't know what the rules are in terms of allowing turning things. I definitely don't want to see crosswalks disappear because there are places, you know, that crosswalks have disappeared. I'm thinking uh, on Fifth Avenue around 60 something street. Um, people cross there anyway. You know, people are crossing all the time in places where, where you know, they say, oh, no crossing because cars are turning, but people are going to do it. So any infrastructure of this kind is definitely much appreciated and especially for somebody like me who's you know on foot all the time and, and i do have you know little kids and stuff so turning cars can be can be a challenge so um if you can if you can find the confirmed locations where these things will be and ones where they're not and um yeah planning for the future we can think about ways to you know add some safety maybe i know we talk about bollards in this committee and we've talked about other things but maybe there's other things we can do to try to you know, make it a better experience, especially since this is uh, a great streets project. We want Fourth Avenue to be a great street. Okay. We'll take that into consideration. Yeah. Um, it, it's also part of Vision Zero. So does that live up to the DOT? Um, I mean, I think we need to go above and beyond minimum standard requirements, but um, is that safety Vision Zero approved, that type of design, just to check with DOT? Yeah. Having turn lanes because, without having mm -hmm. because uh, before the design camera is approved by DOT and DDC do the design, then take over to DOT and they look away and approve it before we do any work. So they showed it, but we can always improve on the construction depending on what you guys are proposing. You can can talk to DOT and we got a contractor on site. We can always just improve it. That can be done. Okay, uh, Jeremy, did we know these design proposals? Yes, and we brought this up years ago. As we pointed out, uh, as the street is designed, even without the increased pedestrian area, you can go four lanes and uh, uh, 
be at the median, but now with this, without the median, you now have to cross five lanes. So it is, uh, I think, more needed crossing time. Um, is it Lafayette who was just talking about uh, changes that can still be made to increase safety? Um, could you talk a little bit more about that? It depends where the committee will, I mean, proposing, and we can take it back to DOT and let them give their input as if we can change it. If it can be done, we can do that. It's just a matter of changing the design. In a timely manner. So, um, Emily is still on the line. Could could you just talk a little bit about the the safety that we're talking about with these turn lanes? Um, so, no, I'm not well versed on the design. Um, so, you can send me an email, and I can get back to you. Um, DDC would be the one that would be more versed on the design of the roadway. So, I would have to do my own research first. So, and and um, this was under a previous liaison, so Emily wasn't here for that. Okay. Um, so what this is something that I think we're um we've been on the record for flagging previously, and now we're seeing it show up in the actual design and construction. Um this is a DOT project. Uh could you talk a little bit about the accountability on what happens next? Uh, I'm not familiar with your com your comments or concerns, so I would really need you to send me an email and I would have to look into it because, again, it was a previous liaison. I'm not well versed on the design and I would have to do my own research to give you a proper uh, answer. Okay. Um, so... We, we see this on 58th, but I think um, Christy and Judith, the GDC, um, so th that's already been built so we can see it. Um, but if you could send us all the locations in our district where those turn lanes will exist without the um, pedestrian walkways so we know all the intersections that are coming up. Will do. Okay, thanks. Um, questions from people, if you have, if you uh, wanna raise your hand. Um, and then we can go to uh, questions from anyone on the community board or the transportation committee. Uh, okay, all right. So, um, and then we can go to questions from the public and public comment um, would be the, the last um, portion <laughs> of the agenda. If you are someone who is an attendee and you wanted to raise a point. Um, Petra again, great, yep. Petra, you can unmute yourself now. Yes. <coughs> um, I heard the whole, the whole presentation and I thank everyone for their time, but I'm very, very concerned about the last comment about those turn, uh, left turn, um, there's no, I was walking on 59 and 58th Street today. They were sweeping that walkway and there is no way for people to be, it's like all opened and it is very, very dangerous. And this whole thing about 60th Street, you have a school on 4th Avenue, you have a school on 3rd Avenue, you have hundreds of parents walking from 5th Avenue to 3rd Avenue. This is something that has to be looked at immediately with DOT because this is scary. This whole design, it, it's not gonna work. The traffic on 4th Avenue, it's just it's making the left turn on 56th Street, on 58th Street, on 60th Street. As it is, 60th Street is a nightmare already. You have all that traffic coming off 3rd Avenue. So this is something that has to be looked at and maybe if they could remedy while the contract is still there is a priority. Thank you. Thank you, Petra. Um... I appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, I appreciate that urgency. Um, and um, I agree, because again, seeing this family crossing the street, it was, I was just struck by how exposed it was. Um, and so what options, Emily, in terms of, we can follow up with an email, but 
the folks are out now. Um, and it's even in terms of the presentation, it sounds like we don't we don't even know which all the streets are that are going to be affected with this left turn. It doesn't sound like anyone on the call knows. Um, so um, what would it mean to stop and um, like actually look at this as an urgent issue before someone gets hit? So the design is is mostly set. Um, that's something that I will have to look and um, speak to DDC about. And um, I'm taking notes tonight on the concerns that I'm hearing, and I will have to get back with you to you with an answer. Okay, I'll call tomorrow um, and to follow up on next steps because um, I think it is. Uh, I'm going to be in the field tomorrow, so you can call me on Monday. Okay, um, DDC and um, uh, just confirming you guys can't like you have to listen, follow up. It has to come from DOT. So you're going to just keep working through all these turn lanes until you're told otherwise. Is that what you're saying? Yes, they have a set design um, that they are following. So anything that needs to be a change order that needs to be happened will be done separately, but they have the work that is that is scheduled will be occurring. And then this is separate from that. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll um, follow up. I'll also strategize with Jeremy and the board um, in terms of uh, what we're, what we're going to do. I mean, this had been flagged previous to your time, but it sounds like it wasn't something that was taken into consideration, which is um, really problematic um, in implementation. Um, um, that being said, um, I want to be able to um, Thank you all the presenters and thank everyone for joining. Um, and we'll have just a preview for a second. Uh, we'll have our next meeting, October 24th. Um, DOT will be coming back for that meeting. Um, we will be talking about, about the BQE rerouting project and um, the impact uh, as well as a um, proposal for a request for Brooklyn car share um, for permits in a few locations on our in our district, um, specifically on 44th Street and 45th Street. Um, there's a request for storage of um, car share vehicles um, in some of the um, residential parking areas. Um, and so we'll have a presentation on um, that request for a permit. Um, so please come to that meeting. Um, Christy, do you want the, before I wrap, it looks like you do have your hand yes, up, so it be a burning do. hand. Thank okay. you. So just to clarify, um, we do have the locations. We just don't know them off the top of our heads. Um, so we will get back to you guys once we, you know, turn to the contracts. Um, and then lastly, Judith is the first point of contact. So we strongly agree that as soon as something comes up, you call, email Judith. Uh, call her first. She's typically out in the field almost all day. Um, and if you can't reach her, leave a voicemail, follow up with an email. I'm pretty sure you'll receive a response quicker than 311. <laughs> so we strongly encourage you to uh, email Judith at the field office. Thank, Thank you. you. And we'll, we'll disseminate um, her information as well. So um Thank you very much um, to our presenters and for everyone for joining this call. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for having us. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.